Yard Hot Springs Black Bear Attack of August 14, 1997. A look back. The following material is extremely graphic. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. Material presented is from Bear Attacks, The Deadly Truth, by James Gary Shelton. The following account is based on Myron's report, that's Myron Zekwith, a telephone interview with RCMP Corporal Scott Morrison, and six newspaper articles that various people sent to James Gary Shelton. Patty Reed McConnell, 37, her son Kelly, 13, and daughter Kristen, 7, were moving from Paris, Texas to Alaska. They were about to start a new exciting life in the frontier state and had stopped at Liard Hot Springs for a break in their long trip. While swimming in Alpha Pool, they met a family group with children about the same age as Kristen. The kids had a great time swimming and playing together. Later, the two families continued up the boardwalk to see the rest of the park. They spent a few minutes looking at Beta Pool, then came back down to the intersection where a secondary boardwalk proceeds east to the Hanging Gardens. At this point, Kristen went with the other family, who was going to the parking lot to eat lunch. Patty and Kelly walked up the first viewing platform, of the Hanging Gardens and read the signs explaining the unique aspects of mineral water and plants. Shortly thereafter, they also decided to head back to their car for lunch. As they started down the boardwalk with Patty in the lead, they saw a black bear only 20 feet away eating vegetation. The bear was sitting silently on its haunches. When it noticed them, it let out a whoof, then returned to feeding. Kelly remarked that they better leave, and if the bear came after them, they should play dead. As they tried to move past the bear, they heard a woofing growl, and the animal was on them in a flash. It knocked Patty down and bit deeply into her chest from the side, then started flinging her back and forth. In panicked desperation, Kelly yelled, play dead, play dead, as he started kicking at the bear trying to save his mother. After several attempts, Kelly finally landed a blow to the bear's face, but the savage attack continued. In a matter of seconds, the screaming woman was mortally wounded with punctures to the lungs and other internal organs. She was bleeding profusely and could no longer breathe properly. Kelly grabbed the stick and yelled as he began beating on the animal. The bear backed off for a second, then lunged at Kelly. It first raked him with its claws, then tackled him. As the bear pinned Kelly to the boardwalk with a front paw, it bit the back of his neck several times. The bear next bit Kelly in the chest, lifted him up, and started shaking him violently. His head was being pummeled against the handrail. Patty now lay motionless. Ray Kitchen, a 57-year-old truck driver from Fort Nelson, had stopped at the park with his daughter and her friend for a swim. Ray reacted instantly when he heard the terrible screams coming from the hanging garden area. He took off up the boardwalk on a dead run and was followed by other people who had also heard the cries for help. When he was close enough to see what was happening, Ray grabbed a fallen limb and started beating the handrail and boardwalk, trying to scare the bear away. Ray kept charging it and yelling at the top of his lungs. The animal ignored Ray as it wrapped its mouth around the boy's neck and twisted. Kelly lost consciousness as he heard the sounds of bones crunching. Ray picked up a bigger stick and speared the bear as hard as he could. The rampaging animal dropped Kelly, retreated for an instant, then charged after its next victim. As it grappled Ray down, they fell five feet off the boardwalk to the ground. The bear first bit into Ray's abdomen and thrashed him back and forth, then ripped open his throat, severing the carotid artery, and with a powerful twisting bite, broke his neck. After tearing his shoulder apart, the bear spun around and squatted on Ray's head and chest. It now started ripping at the man's groin and the inside of his right thigh, swallowing chunks of skin and flesh. Dozens of people were now watching the horrific attack. 
they were all yelling and throwing things at the deadly animal. Ingrid Bailey, a firefighter from California, and Frank Headingham from Vancouver Island soon realized it was too late to help the man being torn apart and eaten. So they ran up to help the gasping, bleeding boy and his mother. Ingrid instructed several people to run to the park headquarters and get first aid equipment. Other people kept yelling and throwing towels and rocks at the bear. It finally retreated to under the boardwalk. But shortly after, the onlooker saw its head pop up where the boy was lying. The bear was growling viciously and popping its teeth. As it tried to bite the boy's arm, Ingrid pulled Kelly back, and Frank kicked the bear in the snout as hard as he could. The bear then retreated, and as it headed toward the main boardwalk, someone started running towards Alpha Pool, yelling, Run for your life, run for your life. Ari Jan Vandervelden, 28, from Calgary, Alberta, was relaxing in Beta Pool with several friends when he heard the screaming. A woman came to the pool and told them that someone was trying to scare a bear away. Ari and his friends hopped out of the pool and headed in the direction where all the noise was coming from to lend a hand, unaware that two people were gasping their last anguishing breaths. As Ari and his friends approached the intersection of the Hanging Garden boardwalk, they heard someone yell, The bear is coming your way. Run for your lives. The men started fleeing as they saw the bear running towards them. Ari fell because his boots were not laced. The bear slowed down as it caught up with him and completed the last few feet in a slow, stalking walk. Ari was lying on his back, kicking at the bear's face as it started biting at his legs. The bear sunk its teeth into Ari's left leg, then chewed its way up to his neck. They both tumbled off the boardwalk. Ari tried to wedge himself under the walk, but the bear was too powerful. It pulled him out and started dragging him down a trail. The animal now started to finish off its fourth victim. It bit into Ari's back and shoulder and started on the neck area again. Ari tried to protect himself, but was helpless against the deadly assault. The bear then spun around squatting on Ari's head and chest. It was just starting on the pelvic area when all of a sudden it collapsed. The gunshot rang out loudly through the park, but Ari hadn't heard it. The attack started, and Dwayne Agabroton of Anchorage, Alaska, saw the savagery of the predatory bear. He ran to the parking lot to get his 30-30 rifle. He raced back just in time to save Ari's life. Dwayne approached to within 15 feet of the bear to make sure he didn't hit Ari when he fired. The bear was so engrossed in its killing frenzy it didn't even notice the gunman as he approached and shot it through the head. In the meantime, another American showed up with a Mini-14. I believe that will be David Webb, but the bear was already dead. With the animal dispatched, Egabroughton stood by watching for other bears as Patty, Kelly, and Ari were evacuated to the helicopter landing pad at the hotel across the highway. Kristen was still in the parking lot with the other family when her mother and brother were carried out. Kelly was conscious and breathing okay, but Patty was very still. Kristen watched, Kristen watched his people desperately administered CPR to her mother. After being rushed to the Fort Nelson Hospital and stabilized, Kelly was flown to Children's Hospital in Vancouver, and Ari was flown to a hospital in Calgary. Kristen was taken to Fort Nelson, where she stayed with RCMP Constable Scott Warnica and his family. They didn't tell her that her mother was dead because they wanted Kristen to be with family when she found out. On Friday, the day after the attack, Patty's mother, Jan Reed, flew from Texas to Vancouver. Following Sunday, Kristen was flown to Vancouver, accompanied by Mrs. Warnica, so she could be with her brother and grandmother. There are many heroes in this sad story. Two of them died. Many others risked their lives trying to fight off an animal that weighed no more than a large man a predatory bear that killed and fed upon people at will. That is, until someone arrived with a gun. <laughs>